episode two of Descent into the Wormhole, where we discuss everything from ancient civilizations to modern day social issues and everything in between. I'm Les. And I'm Stevie J. And in today's episode, we'll be taking a deep dive into the topic of censorship and why we are so censored. So make sure you grab that coffee or hit the cruise control and let's get into it. Oh, we're going to get censored for this one. <laughs> well... It's funny that you say that. I mean, are we are we definitely going to get censored for this? I feel like we will, at least on uh, you know a certain platform, because we're doing this podcast on uh, on iTunes or wherever people are listening to it as a podcast. But we're also putting these up on YouTube onto the YouTube channel. So I feel like that's a good place to start. And YouTube, I feel like, used to be this place where anybody could just put up videos of whatever, and it didn't matter. And then it turned into where we are today where not just and I can understand graphic videos like you know yeah. things that are kind of disgusting I think that's fine sense of that but we've gone to the level now of where saying a person's name saying a topic mentioning a topic in a video will get it uh, deplatformed or demonetized or not even shown to anybody so YouTube's probably a good place to start it's a very good place to start and I understand because I, I feel that this all kind of kicked off, and I believe it was 2019 when they kicked off with anything that had anything to do with children was no longer going to be monetized. Right. And if you had children in it or if it was geared towards children, and um, I'm, I don't feel like I'm on board with the whole non-monetization because I feel that a lot of the videos, like the... Um, the production quality and the effort that people have gone into to make the videos for kids, they are actually directed at kids, yes. really yeah. deserve that money. They deserve Absolutely. that ad revenue. They've done such an amazing job. They put so much time and energy. Yeah. But I yep. can understand um, having rules around that because we need to protect the children. Absolutely. Of course. Yeah. Absolutely. Of course. But taking away their ad revenue, I just don't believe in that but i feel that all of a sudden it kind of snowballed from there i feel that was the the starting point and then all of a sudden as we both know covering certain topics we're 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 censored at every moment there are, yeah. you have to go through and i have some videos that are so choppy because i've cut out all the no-no yes. words like well yeah. this isn't even a video anymore right this is yeah. just a whole it's bunch of <laughs> It, it's, it's like, it's like uh, somebody's put the video in through a blender and it's come out the other side yeah. with all these choppy words and everything. And and look, it, it, the quality's gone, isn't it? Like you, you lose quality on it. And what's really, you, you're so right, like it's just escalated and snowboarded. And that's probably a good starting point to talk about was with the kids stuff. And I, I feel like we should protect the children. And, I, and there are definitely uh, people out there who want to do the wrong thing when it comes to children and in that space and everything like that. And yes, we should have some clear rules about that and, and, and protect them. But I feel like there's also a, uh, a societal issue with this, you know, that ties into YouTube doing that and the motivation for YouTube, keeping the, the, the children's side of it out of it, but with everyone else on the platform, um, keeping those children aside, I feel like there's a, a societal thing here, whereas a, a loud group of people have said to YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, like all these platforms, and they have said, this topic is now offensive. Right. You are not allowed to talk about this topic. We don't want to hear about it. Or if you do talk about it, now this is where it gets really interesting for me, is well, you can talk about this topic, but only if your opinion is this. Only if you have the right opinion, the only if you have the opinion of the popular narrative. Otherwise, sorry, you can't be on the platform. And we've seen that with so many different, um, we're talking about YouTube, we've seen it with so many different YouTube channels who may have uh, those unpopular opinions. They may do things and say things that people don't agree with in a majority sense. But isn't that why we have freedom of thought? And people feel like, or say they live in this, in free countries, you know, like they... But it's such an illusion. It's such an illusion. And let's be honest, a lot of people don't have any idea 
how deep that illusion is or how big that illusion is. But we will probably get into that even in another podcast. But uh, <laughs> yeah. as far as censorship goes, I feel like the loud minority is actually dictating these rules and censorship for everybody. Yeah. Well, and that's just it. Someone got offended or it's not the narrative that the higher ups want um, spoken about. Because at mm-hmm. the end of the day, if I'm putting a video up with my opinion, my opinion on a topic, going back to the, to the very first episode that we did, is just my opinion. And I'm not forcing it on anyone yes. and no one has to believe me and no one even has to watch it. But to yeah. not to, but to, to cut it off at the knees, even for, before it grew legs, really right. is, is you're, you're, what you're saying is no. No, because it's not what we want the rest of the people to believe. How dare you yes. spread misinformation? And I'm loving that word misinformation because <laughs> we have no guaranteed proof that what the the actual, like the, the narrative that uh, the higher ups want us to hear is actually true information. We have no facts on basis. We, right. have, we, we have a few charts and we have a guy in a lab coat <laughs> or a guy with a gavel or a guy in yeah. some sort of uniform saying, I am the authority figure. And we're supposed to say, okay, just taking your yeah. word for it. But people can't take our word for it as innocent minions, just with their own opinion. Exactly. It's such a good point. Yeah. And, and th- th- that's the thing about these, um, about these videos and other platforms that are being censored too, yeah. whatever the platform is, because it's like, it- it's our opinion. And people have, it's last time I checked, people have their own thumbs still. Mm-hmm. So if they're scrolling on their phone and they come across a video they don't like, say it's one of ours. They can keep scrolling. Yes. It does not impact their life whatsoever. No. But for YouTube to not even put it there and make it available for that those people and that audience who are interested, mm-hmm. I find that that is, uh, you know, typifies where we are in society right now because people who are actively seeking new ideas, different ideas, a different opinion, can't find it when they're looking for it because platforms are removing that. And what does that leave? It leaves the one narrative, like you said, that the higher ups want everyone to see. Mm -hmm. And then again, we get back into that feedback loop of, okay, well, that's the only thing I'm hearing. So it must be true and it must be true. And these lab coat dudes and these, you know, uh, gavel guys are telling me that this is what's real. So it must be real. But it's, it's not real. None of it's real. It's all made up. It's all completely fabricated. And the thing is, people don't even challenge it anymore. They're getting to this point where, ah, what's the big deal? I'm sorry, but like to me, it is a big deal. It is a huge deal. And they still will, they will applaud these rules coming in whilst saying, I live in a free country. I live in a free, no, you don't. No. Like you don't live in a free country. And I'm sorry to say that if you live in the Western world, like let's talk UK, Australia, Canada, America, you don't live in a free country at all. Mm-mm. A person, the, the, the person who is free is a person who lives in the woods and is not connected to any of society. That person is truly free. Now that's a physical sense. Of course you can be emotionally, mentally, spiritually free yes. because you can wake up and recognize that all of those things are fake but um, it's, it's so interesting to me that, that people put so much emphasis and so much of their thoughts and energy into believing everything when they know that this censorship is happening. You're, all, you're literally told about it. Yep. So, yeah, I don't know. It's crazy to me. Well, wasn't there a gal, and I'm sorry I'm not more informed on this, but it just, it just hit me now. Wasn't there a gal who said that there was they were going to be censoring or removing uh, Facebook groups when it came to um, a certain topic? And she she said, we're going to be targeting the Facebook groups. And she was a government official. We're going to be uh, targeting the Facebook groups. And I think there were Twitter <laughs> yes. groups or something. Yep. And it's like, well, you like you what happened to us being able to voice our opinion without you coming in and saying no? Because right. once again, people have their own minds. We are honestly, when it comes to the censorship, we are treated like children uh, that don't yes. know what's up or down. We don't, we can't be trusted to have our own thoughts because heaven right. forbid we could run amok. 
if we well, have our own thoughts. Like <laughs> and we may, we well, may go against the grain if we have our own thoughts. Yes, yes. We may riot in the streets if we have our own thoughts when we realize, wait a second, <laughs> yep. wait a second. All of this is not what you say it is. And yep. the thing is, we see so many lies in the mainstream media about like when we can call out lies, like flat out lies from other topics that we've covered. Yeah. And like, and openly, and everyone's like, yeah, it's an absolute lie. Where else are they lying? Like, don't tell right. me they're only lying about that one thing. Don't tell me right. they're twisting the narrative so it looks like this other one thing yeah. is a way that it isn't. Because it's not just that one thing. It is absolutely <laughs> everything is twisted yep. and molded and manipulated. And as you said, it just keeps coming in and coming in. And next thing you know, that's all you're thinking. That's all you're thinking yep. because that's all you hear. Repetition is the yep. mother of skill. Absolutely. Yep. And that's why those all those lies get believed, I feel, because yeah. everyone's bombarded with it so often and so and so uh, one-sided because the, the five big media groups in the world, that's it. By, by the way, people listening, there are five big media groups in the world who own all the media that we see, at least in the Western world. Mm -hmm. So when you think about, oh, but I go, I go to this independent news source over here, unless you verify 100% that that is completely independent news source, it's not. It's linked back to one of the big uh, corporations, which is the news media. And mm -hmm. lo and behold, they all have the same narrative because it's, it shares their common interest. And it pushes the narrative that, let's be honest, uh, gets them what they want, gets them what they need. And it gets, uh, they have real power when it comes to po politics. They have real power when it comes to social narratives. They have real power overall. And um, yeah, it's so funny that um, that you brought up that stuff about the, the politician who said that, because I remember hearing that. And it's like, okay, so... So Facebook and social media platforms have so far gotten away, so far as I'm aware, have gotten away with banning people, restricting people, comments, removing things, all of that uh, against, uh, in the US at least, the First Amendment because they're a private entity. They're a private company with their own policies. They can do what they like, right? But when this woman, and I kind of forget her name, stands up in front of the White House and says, yes, we are, uh, we are giving, we are telling Facebook what to do and what problematic comments to call out, what problematic posts to call out, what misinformation there is on their platform. Uh, sorry, you no longer are an uh, a independent private platform. You just became a state actor. You're acting on behalf of the government. So sorry, slippery slope there, but that's no longer, uh, you know, under the First Amendment, in my opinion, anyway. It is a slippery, a slippery slope because next thing you know, because I don't want to be a girl. I know that we're all attached. We're always all, we're, we're watched, you know, every keystroke we make, like everything's watched. Right. Anyway, yeah. But I am not willing to uh, put my thoughts, emotions, and words onto a platform that is government run. Right. And, and as the, as you just said, it, they will be government run if they have, if, if uh, these platforms have to comply. Yeah. How yep. many people will jump ship? Now, yeah. I know there's always a smarty pants out there that will have a new uh, app up and running in a month to house all of the people who didn't want to be on the government funded one. But right. they won't stop. That's the thing. We can't get away from it. Anytime you're out there in the, in the public sphere, there's always yeah. going to be some kind of control. And <laughs> it is... It is just so, you can't well, get away from it. That's right. It's, it's everywhere. And I was, it's so funny that you meant, said that word, uh, control, because that's what I was going to talk about next is it all comes down to control. Like, and, it's, and we're going to be talking about uh, ancient civilizations and all kinds of things on this podcast going forward. And, you know, we look far, far back in history and it all comes down to control. A, a certain group of people want to control another group of people. In this case, we can very broadly say it's the people in power and the people without power. Mm -hmm. And the people in power want to keep those without power that way. They want to keep them without power, keep them controlled. And that's because everything that they do is in, let's call them the worker bees, 
you and I, <laughs> we feed into what, what gives them their power. And so when they control the media, when they control social media, when they control ideas, when they control opinions, mm -hmm. they control everybody's perception. And when they control perception, they basically control the people's behavior, don't they? Yeah. Because what we perceive as reality or what we perceive as true or what we perceive as right, that's an interesting word, right and wrong, mm -hmm. but what we perceive as uh, you know, the right thing or any of those different things um, is what we'll do. That's how we'll behave. That'll influence what we do and how we act. So if we only ever get one side of it, mm -hmm. then most people... And I'll say most because there are a lot of people like you and I who I feel are across this and we're 100% realising that it's <laughs> it's all an illusion. But yes. um, there's so many people out there who, who don't and they just keep going on and on and on. You know, yep, I'm happy to pay my taxes. I'm happy to do this and I'm happy to do that without stepping back for a second and realising what is this giant cog in this machine mm -hmm. that makes everything just keep turning around and around and around you know, people have to get, we talked about marriage in the last one, but people, you know, they go to school, they go to college, they go to work, they go to marriage, they go to having a house and kids. And then before too long, it's time to retire and then they die. And it's like, what people say that's a meaningful life. And I'm not criticizing people here. I'm not criticizing anyone, but people say that is a meaningful life. But if they really truly stepped back away from that, and didn't have to do all those things because of the societal pressures. What would they truly say is something that makes them happy? Surely it's not working 40, 50 years in some job. Surely no. it's not that. No, and you're absolutely right. And the thing is, because it's a it's a meaningful life, I, I didn't hear you say a happy life. Right. I didn't, I didn't right. hear that part. <laughs> good call, good pick up. <laughs> I didn't. Because you didn't, because a lot of people they're not happy. Like you look around, there's a lot of not happy people around because they are, they're doing, they're in jobs that their parents wanted them to be in. They're married because society said they needed to. They had children because society says, this is what you do. And they look around and they hit 50 and they look around and they say, holy moly, I don't want any of this. And they start to realize because at that age, you know, parents start to sadly pass away. And once your parents right. start to pass away, you start to realize I'm living my life for this person who's no longer here. Who am mm -hmm. I here? Who am I pleasing right now? Yeah. And life crisis kicks in. I think this is where it all kicks off because right. now you realize yeah. I wasted all of this time mm -hmm. trying to live the life that my parent wanted for me or that my grandparent yes. wanted for me. And now they're gone. And now I'm, I don't need to please them anymore. So who do I need to please? Woo! Imagine <laughs> that. I get to please myself. And so they right, almost exactly. revert back. They're like, I need to, like, I've only got 30 years if I'm blessed to yep. make up for the last 50 that were quote unquote, like almost stolen from me because I was so controlled by everything else around me. Yeah. And you're so right. Like so spot on because that midlife crisis it's like, and, and that's just a term that people have put on that, that stage of realization when you realize, holy crap, uh -huh. what were all those years? Like, yeah. and, and I'm so glad you uh, brought up the comparison between meaningful and happiness, yeah. like an actual happiness, because you can, you could say, and we have so much emphasis on stuff these days, but you could say, um, you've done all those things, the job, the kids, the wife, the family, like all of that stuff. And throughout all of that, you've been telling everyone you're happy because that's their expectation. They expect you to say you're happy because you've right. done all the expected things. Right. But that doesn't mean you have to be happy. Right. That doesn't mean you are happy. Mm. And if you have that realization one day and go, wow, this person that I portray to everybody else is not actually who I am. I'm not happy. I'm not happy at all. Then yeah, of course you have that moment being like, okay, especially if you're you know a little bit older, yeah. you have that that thought of what do, what can I do to be happy now in my life? Like I need to do everything I can yeah. to make the most of this life because mm -hmm. you know we spend so much time, or people in general spend so much time at a workplace doing. Let's be honest, 
jobs they don't really even want to do. No. Or even if they want to do them, they want to do them for the wrong reasons. I can get six figures because if I get six figures, that'll get me the house that I want. That'll get me the wife that I need. Yep. That'll get me all of these things. Yep. So you're doing this job for the wrong reason and you spend so much time doing it and never stop to ask yourself, am I happy doing this job? Yeah. And I get, it's not, you know, there's not a lot of jobs out there people love that they can go, well, I'm going to earn six figures, but the, people can't let that go. Mm -hmm. At what price? And what price do we put on our happiness? That's the question. Do we say, are these things that I do, working for somebody else, doing all that stuff, it, is that something that truly makes me happy? If it does, perfect. You've, you've got it figured out. Yeah. But if it doesn't, how much importance do we put on that and and where do we put our attention like do we put our attention on ourselves being happy or do we put it on the focus of all these other things that are expected of us yeah. uh, it's a it's not a simple question and people uh, i find have that realization and the censorship part of it mm -hmm. sorry just to tie back to that yeah, yeah. i know, uh, the, the, I know. <laughs> yeah the, the censorship part of that is the people in power don't want us to realize. They don't want us to wake up. They don't want to realize we're unhappy because if we realize that we can be truly happy without this system, then it all collapses right. as far as they're concerned. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean there needs to be riots and wars and all these things. It just simply means we don't care about it anymore yeah. and they have no value. Their value as these people up here on a pedestal is removed. It's gone. And so they want to keep people in the dark, hence why you get everything to do with fear in the news. It's like, be afraid of this. You need us. You need the government for this. You need us for that. We'll, don't worry. We'll tell you exactly what to do and how to live your lives. Yeah. You get no personal responsibility. You get no personal choice or freedom, no. but it's fine. We're looking after you. Yes. <laughs> wink, we wink. Know. Yeah, we <laughs> know what's best for you. Don't worry. And the problem uh -huh. is, is that no one knows what's best for us except for us. And as you say, even we barely know what's best for us. Right. If we're not listening to our intuition, we have no clue what's best for us. Exactly. So how can anybody else? And when you say, you know, the the fear, um, the thing that came up was uh, I was I was telling you the other day that I was watching uh, Penguin Town, and it is about <laughs> yes. penguins that show up to this town to to breed and then they leave again, and the rating on this show, fear. <laughs> Sorry. Not PG thirteen uh, because you know the penguins go at it a little bit. It wasn't. Uh, <laughs> it wasn't rated R because I don't know for whatever reason. Actual fear. Now I can understand, and here's here's the thing. There's no censorship when it comes to animal uh, cruelty when it comes to TV shows. Right. Like I'm, I'm always a little uh, disturbed yeah. that I I had no trigger warning when it comes to animal abuse, but fear i understand it's wildlife but i understand you know nature is sad for me anyways oh forget about it right but i still i still watch it because i love it but fear but guess what rating is not on the news i'm gonna take a wild guess can i have a wild guess yes let's wild card. throw it out there and say fear is not a warning on the news no warning on the news oh of course not yet yeah, where, where do you so the, the penguins, the cute little waddling penguins. Yeah. The, the, and let's be honest, they're not killing anybody. There's no, no murders happening in this show, is there? No. No. no? There's no. There's there's no. Uh, let's uh, like pornographic material with the penguins. No. Maybe <laughs> so, a little bit. Maybe a just little a, bit. just just a teeny bit. All yeah. right. So <laughs> with <laughs> with that, the but. What do we get in the, in the, in the uh, mainstream media all the, all the time? You tell me, you, you find me a story, and this is to people who, who are listening. Find us a story or more than one a day that is positive. Yeah. That is a positive story that doesn't talk or infer some kind of fear upon people. Yeah. Oh, there was 55 murders over here. There was a, a tidal wave here that killed three people. There was a sinkhole here. Oh, the vaccine this and the you know disease that. You try and go through a day watching all these uh, news channels, reading the paper, all that, and find something without without fear in it as well, or the connotation of fear. Yeah. We'll wait. They want, yeah, exactly. <laughs> we'll, we'll wait. <laughs> I've got snacks. I'm good. <laughs> so that's just it, though. They want to, and the reason why they're doing this is because they want to keep us all asleep, mindless, herded sheep, 
going to work every day, producing that, like giving over our labor, Mm -hmm. giving over our, and whatever job it is, giving over our labor, our time, our resources, our personal resources Mm -hmm. to somebody else who, yes, we get an exchange of money. Like we get money for that, right? But they take a percentage of that and take it away and give it to the government. For the privilege. Yes, right. For the privilege of giving over our labor. Yeah. And then they they want to tell us that they spend it on, of course, uh, you know, they pick up our rubbish bins once a week and they do this and they do that. That's fine. But in my opinion, we could do with all, without all of that. There could be just a free market system, yep. a trade system. Okay, I have these particular skills. Uh, I can, I don't know, what can I do? I can do an interpretive dance, right? So I, can, yes, <laughs> I can. can come over to your house and I will give you a free interpretive dance and you will come around once a week and pick up my bins. Mm-hmm. There's a trade. That's a and, very good trade, actually. <laughs> which way? <laughs> you didn't say which way. Because <laughs> I feel like it could, I could also be arrested for doing that interpretive dance at somebody's house. <laughs> but the point is, the point is we can trade goods and services with each other without the government. We don't necessarily need them. And I don't need the government 100% to tell me what my thoughts are and what my opinions are on something and how to keep me safe. i got that covered. I can keep myself safe. Yeah. So uh, when it comes to all of those sort of things, and look, I know someone's going to say, oh, you keep you safe. What about the police? Well, we can have the same thing with police too, right? We don't have to have a governmental system that informs, that uh, dictates what the police do and the laws that the police have. It's the same thing. Yeah. So they want to keep us in that. They keep us yeah. in that blanket. They keep us wrapped up in well, fear. Well, fear is the lowest vibration you can go. Right. Fear is, and the it's 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 quite a it's it's quite the rise to get to absolute pure joy. But mm. if you keep everyone at fear, well, you keep them very um, just very very dense, and nothing good can come into your life when you are in. A constant vibration of fear and anytime you and so you really want to make sure that if you're trying to raise your vibration you want to stay out of that fear you're not watching the news you're not following up on you know the latest this or the latest that in whatever country it is mm-hmm. um obviously you want to be aware enough of your surroundings but i don't watch the news i haven't had cable tv in i don't know 10 years and i am very okay being ignorant to a lot of what's going on because yes. my vibration is higher and I am a hell of a lot happier than I was when I focused on what was going on because guess yeah. what someone in school one day over and over again I'm not going to say the teacher's name said that you are not an intelligent person if you don't follow the news only intelligent people follow the news so they have things to talk about so they're <laughs> in the know the, it's he didn't know any better. He didn't know any better. He didn't know what he was doing. <laughs> right. He thought he was doing the right thing, teaching us that. So that's what I did. I was a good little mm. sheep and I did what I was told. And then yeah. when I started to question everything and then that information came to me, like, wait a minute, this fear is not doing me any good. No good can come in. I can't see the goodness because I can't feel the goodness. Yes. Yeah. So I cut it all off. And let me tell yeah. you, I am much happier Stay well, I'm with you. Negativity. Yeah, I'm with you 100% on the news. Like, uh, same thing for me. I, I, uh, it was the same connotation. Nobody said it directly to me, but it was the same inference when I was young. Like, you know, watch the news, be informed, keep up to date, like, with what's going on. Um, but yeah, same thing. I haven't watched the news in I don't know how many years because all it does to me is makes me get frustrated because I now see all of the lies, the fakeness, and the, uh, let's just say, I guess, less than savory motivations that these media companies have for saying the things that they say and doing the things that they do. So, and not to mention half the stories are absolute trash anyway. Like it's, you know, every second story is about Joe Blow's neighbor threw a thing over the fence and like, really, this is news? Come on, people. Um, But the other thing too is, you mentioned about, uh, you know, when you have a conversation, this person said to you, be informed so that when you have conversations with people, you're informed and you know what's going on. 
And it's like, it's so funny because what it does in this constant bombardment of the mainstream media and everything like that, and what we're supposed to think and the censoring of any other ideas mm -hmm. means that everybody gets together at these water cooler conversations and they're all talking about the same thing. Right. And what are they talking about? They're talking about whatever the government wants them to be talking about or whatever the, the higher ups and the people in power want them to be talking about because yep. that's all they've heard. Mm -hmm. And it's so funny to me to see somebody's eyes just go like dinner plates when you share a different idea with them. Like, yeah. you know, I had this, I was telling you, I had this uh, interaction at a coffee shop the other day with, uh, with someone, very nice girl. And uh, she makes good coffee too, but she was sharing her opinion on, um, on COVID and everything. And I shared a different thought with her and her eyes just went like dinner plates, not in a way of she was upset or anything. She just had never even thought of what I'd said from that point of view or from a different point of view. And I wasn't telling her to think this or believe what I said or agree with me, mm -hmm. but just giving her that different thought, I could tell when her eyes lit up, she'd never even thought of it that way, not even for a second. Mm -hmm. And that may not change her opinion. That may not change her own thoughts on it. Mm -hmm. But if it does, like if it sits in there and at least can be another thought that she has, I feel like that's a good thing. But what it made me realize was all of this is like what well, everything we've said today, 100% true, because people are just so uh, got the blinders on, you know, they're just completely kept under wraps with what's really going on. Yeah. Or oh, even, an, even, even another idea about what's going on. Yeah. And heaven, for, and heaven forbid, heaven forbid. And oh my, like, it's just. When does it stop, though? That's my question. Like, we. When it comes, like, I still watch Netflix. We both do. Like, we're, we're not saying that, you know, we're completely against everything that is put out that is censored because Netflix is all censored. The news right. is all censored. All of that is very, very censored. But, like, we do watch, like, the Gaia Network and because yes. that, that's not government um, regulated. Yeah. And that's where we go and, and watch a lot of our stuff and kind of yeah. get caught up on things. So when does it stop? When when does this nonsense of what we can think and what we can't think, wh where's where's the line? Where is this line that is the yeah. we say, okay, now you've gone too far? Yeah. Well, that's a really great point. And we've seen protests around the world recently. Yes. Um, people protesting for their freedom. And yeah. I think maybe that's where it goes. And yeah. so... Uh, everyone's kept under wraps right now and controlled and everything. And it's like I, the way I sort of think about it is, you know, imagine a water balloon or a balloon full of water mm -hmm. and it's in your hand and you squeeze it. And the more you squeeze it, those little parts of the balloon keep going through your fingers. And, you know, people have used the same analogy with sand. You're like you grip it tightly, but it's, it keeps falling through your fingers. And I feel that's what's going to happen because although so many people are actually you know, more like sheeple and it's not their fault, but they just have been conditioned that way over time to just believe everything. But when they push people so far and it gets to a boiling point and people start to go, you know what, like, what the hell? Enough, enough is enough. I'm bloody over this. And so what happens is it boils over and we're seeing protests now. But the thing, the real key to, to this for me is what do they do after the protest? Or let's just say they get uh, that small change or they have a realization in that moment when they're protesting or they're, they're up in arms against whatever it is, in this case, freedom. Um, having that realization, I hope that what happens is that that opens them up to more ideas, more thoughts, a different vibration than that fear you were talking about before and let something else in so that it can actually raise that vibration, be open to things and step back, have a look at what is really going on because it's actually quite obvious when you see all of these pieces connected. You mentioned that before about how everything's all connected. You know, to look at something in isolation doesn't seem that strange. But when you look at it all connected, you go, it's it's obvious. Yeah. It's obvious how all of these things tie into each other. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, it, when you said, um, like, the sheeple and it's not their fault, the first, the first image that came to mind is little kids going to kindergarten. Because we are taught, we go to school, 
and we're told to believe whatever the teacher tells us, to believe whatever that history book says, only yeah. to find out that we get to the age we are now, that a lot of the things that we were taught in school, they're actually finding out that wasn't true. Right. So, yeah. and we, and heaven forbid, like I, I remember being in school and uh, this, this kid, he was so smart. Um, he would question a lot of things and he would be always down at the principal's office because he was always questioning the teacher. Like, how dare you question the teacher? And uh, I just yes. wonder how many, like how many times was he absolutely correct in questioning this person, but we are censored in the, in the education we get, we are censored in the news we get, we are censored in even the things we search for. Like if I, right. if I search yes. for, Hey, I, I search for, I had this dream. What possibly could it have meant? Yeah. That's even censored. Yep. Cause that goes to the top of the Google page. Yep. Like everything, Absolutely. everything is fed to us and we're not allowed to ask any questions. And because you're right, they do want us to keep the thought, the, our thoughts the same because the thought comes, then the emotion, then the behavior. So they want us right. all in the same behavior because if you want to change your behavior, you need to change it at the top. You need to change it with right. your thought. So if we're changing our thoughts, we're changing our behavior, they can't have yes. that. They, Ooh, start, they start to panic. They're like, the horses yep. are getting ready to leave the barn. We can't <laughs> have that. We can't have it. <laughs> <laughs> somebody just gave them a smack on the ass and they're yeah. about to bolt like yeah. we gotta we gotta keep these guys under wraps like let's make sure we uh get some more stuff out about this get some more stuff out about that yeah. what else can we tell them to be afraid of so that yeah. we can fix it we've got to be the people who are the fixers so people need us yeah absolutely yeah. it's so true and in school you get start start being fed that from then yeah very like much. don't don't argue don't disagree like this is how it is and I think that's a really dangerous thing because as human beings, forget forget everything. Like we have we have tangible, real things, right? And that's another topic we'll get into <laughs> as well about whether those things are actually real. But in this reality we're in right now, we can feel things, we can touch things, we can see things, okay? But, and that's what I mean by tangible, but all of these things that are made up, like a, a great example is laws. What is a law? Like, show me a phys physically show me a law. Can you do it? No. Of course. So all it is, is a, it's an idea, it's a thought that a group of people have agreed on. Yeah. And that's what gives it some kind of weight in this reality that we have. But essentially, all it is is paper and words written on paper. It isn't actually anything. Yet, the, uh, the bigger the group that agrees to it, the more power it has. So what I'd love to see is the more people agree with what we've been saying and not necessarily agree, be open to some of the things we've been talking about with vibration and looking and asking questions and having different thoughts and things like that. Because if a large group of people are on the same uh, vibration or frequency with that, mm -hmm. then that becomes what everybody agrees is the normal and not this rubbish of people in government, people in power, you know, what the media tells us and fear. And then we could actually maybe, I don't know, I could be being a bit utopian here, but the world could actually feel a whole lot more joy yeah. and happiness. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, wouldn't that be nice? Wouldn't it? It'd be so nice. Oh, get the warm and fuzzies thinking about that. <laughs> yeah. Me too, me too. Yeah. Oh, I really do get the warm and fuzzies thinking about that. Like my heart just feels really good that if more and more people just opened up and said no more, like they can, they can toot and tout, tout their horns all they want. But if we just don't believe it and if we're not buying into it, then we're one step ahead. Like we don't even have to tell them that we're not paying attention. That's the best way yes. to not, yes. to, to just let them think that they're getting away with something is don't listen to it. Don't let the fear creep in. Do your own thing. Focus on your own vibration and focus on raising our own vibrations as, as a single entity. And together, it will, because the more we rise and the more we rise to the level of love, when it comes to the yeah. vibration of love, it actually raises other people around you with, without even telling them what you're doing. It automatically raises. So that's actually my hope. That's my hope for... Uh, the future is that we can get enough people to raise up to that love vibration that it just automatically raises the people around you. But that's fantastic. Agree.
It would be so good. And like you said, you know, it gives me the warm and fuzzies too, because what a, what a nice place to live. Like what a, a nice environment to live in. And, you know, we, um, you mentioned Netflix and stuff before, how we still watch and everything. And yeah. I just want to, I just want to be clear. Like we, we see all of this stuff and there's a difference between uh, saying I'm boycotting these things because of what I am aware of mm -hmm. and having an understanding and sort of being awake to what's going on, yeah. but also understanding that, it can't be changed by doing things like boycotting. I feel like that, you know, if people want to boycott things, that's fine. That Everyone can do what exactly they want. Yes. But really, I think we need to look into ourselves, like you just said, work on that vibration for ourselves and spread that to other people and ignore the, ignore the garbage, ignore all the lies, ignore the, the fear. And we actually could become a much, a much better place, a much happier place. Yeah, and then the censorship wouldn't, they wouldn't have any control over us. They can try and censor exactly. us. Exactly, right. Yeah. But if we right. don't care, if we don't pay any mind to it, then it, it has no it has no basis in reality. Yeah, it holds no weight. Yeah. I like it. Great chat. Really good chat. Yeah. Really good chat. Thank you. So thanks everyone. Thank you so much for stopping by and listening to us. We hope that you enjoyed our conversation and we hope that you got something out of it that has you maybe thinking a little bit more outside of the box. Absolutely agree. Great conversation today. I hope you all enjoyed it as well. And look, hopefully after this discussion today, maybe you can just work on raising that vibration, vibration for yourself a little bit and for other people as well. Have a great day. Take care guys. Thank you.